There's no evidence for curvature when you use your own senses and your own observations. Cross Lake Michigan from St. Joseph to Chicago is 60 miles. Over 60 miles to anything under 2,400 feet should not be seen. This is a visual of how that works. See the blue leather, obviously the green line is you, you're straight out. If you're looking straight out, obviously the earth's supposed to curve, so the blue line is where it curves. Anything beyond the blue line should not be seen. Sears Tower is only 450 feet high. It's the highest, obviously, building in Chicago. It's giving you the heights of some of the rest of the um, buildings there. There's quite a famous picture, a guy called Joshua Nowicki. Of Chicago from 60 miles away. We shouldn't be able to see any of it. It should be all behind 2,400 feet of curve. Yeah? Now, people say, ah, but you can't see the bottom of the... You know, it's proven that the Earth's curved, because you can't see the bottom of it. But you can't see the bottom of it, because seas and lakes, they wave. They go up and down. They're not completely... I mean, obviously, if it's completely flat and completely clear, then you, you'll, you'll see a lot more of it. But this actually proves that the, that, the, that the picture wasn't taken from very high above sea level. If it was, you, you, you'd see a lot more of the buildings, like in this next one. From slightly closer, from only 37 miles away, and should be behind 900 feet of curve, I think we can see more than 500 feet of the Sears Tower there, but you can see virtually all of the skyline. Because obviously it's a clearer day, it's a little bit brighter, and obviously the, the waves aren't as choppy. Here's the opposite, there's the, you know, there's 36 miles of waves in between. Why would we see the whole thing? But we can still see far more of it, it should be 840 feet a drop. You shouldn't be able to see, oh, you should be able to see less than, less than the top half of those. We move on to a different city, Toronto, across Lake Ontario. Place called Grimsby, obviously not in Lincolnshire. 37 miles away, so be behind 900 feet of curve. The CN Tower is 1,800 feet tall. You should be able to see only the top half of that and hardly any of the rest of Toronto. Can we see pretty much the whole skyline there? Again, you can check this out for yourself. I, I, I had a, I, you know, you can get half a dozen of these pictures from various places all around this bay. Yeah, this is actually taken from the red lines there. That's the crimson is here. So it's actually a little bit further than this red line, but you can get pictures of, from Toronto from all over this beach. Yeah, and you can see way more of it than we should be. You now, people say, "Oh, well, that's light refracting, bending it round the curve." <laughs> it doesn't look like a mirage. I've seen mirages. They're inverted or the wavy. We know what a mirage looks like. That's just, that's, we can see it in the distance. 81 miles away from Genoa. It's the Isle of Gorgona. It's only 70 feet above sea level. We shouldn't be able to see anyone. Or we should be able to see the tip of it. We can see most of the island. It should be behind 4,300 feet of curve. It should have curved away by now. We can still see it. We'll bring it closer back home. The Isle of Man from the file Co, 61 miles away. And again, we can't just see the tops of the turbines, we can see virtually all of them. From 61 miles away, Snaefell is 2,030 feet high, 2,034 feet high, so that's the highest point on the Isle of Man. 61 miles away should be 2,480 feet of curvature. Should be, you know, half a mile below that horizon. From London, 75 miles away. Starts getting interesting when you go and you start getting towards the 100 mile mark. We're talking over a mile of dip now. This is the uh, Isle, Isle of Oahu, taken from Kaui, Kaua, Kaua, thank you, in Hawaii. It's 90 miles away. Again, you can see, you know, apart from, you know, whatever bit the waves are hiding, we can see a lot of that island. And here's, here's the numbers for it. It should be behind 5,400 feet a drop. Its elevation is 4,003 feet, so we shouldn't even be able to see the tip of it. You can see nearly all of it. This is the Sierra Nevada range from Mount Diablo in California, San Francisco. It's 160 miles. Well, yes, we're up a mountain, yes, they're up a mountain, but we can see, again, a lot of the bottom of the mountains. You can, you can see the snow-capped tops, and we can see the rest of the mountains as well. 160 miles away, this should be, should be behind 17,000 feet of curve. Again, yes, you might be able to see the top of it, but not all of the mountains. And here's the furthest one I've found so far. This is my record so far. I'm sure it'll keep on growing. This is the reunion island from the Isle of Mauritius. It's 149 miles away. It's a long, long, long way away. And once again, we can see the peak, but we can also see most of the rest of the This is quite clearly a very, very good observational day. Very clear, very calm. Um, the highest peak on Reunion Island is 3,072 metres tall. It's just under two miles. 
149 miles away, everything should be behind 2.8 miles of curvature. Should have curved way, way away. And again, it's not just the tops we can see, we can see much more, we can see a lot more, you know, 2,000 feet or so of that. We can see far more. That's what I'm saying about the Z-axis curve. It's not there. It's not there if you watch a boat out to sea and then get a telescope on it, it'll come back into view again. Yeah, it's perspective and it's obviously the limits of our, our, our eyesight, but it's also conditions as well, quite clearly. Yeah, heat, haze, condition, what have you. Visible condition, do check. But the point is that photographs have been taken. I've just shown you a dozen photographs from starting at 30 miles, 60 miles, 90 miles. Now we can see, oh, we can see 150 miles in the distance and it should well have disappeared behind the curve of the globe. Huge flat places on Earth, everybody's aware. If you ever watch Top Gear, the Bonneville Salt Flats, where everybody goes racing. But there's even bigger ones in South America, uh, is it uh, Ethiopia, uh, but the Salad, Salad uh, Yama in, in Bolivia. They've gone for 4,000 square miles, they've gone for hundreds of thousands of square miles. Big flat places on Earth. Yeah, famously, flatter than a pancake. <clears throat> the evidence is all around us. The Earth is flat, and that is that. Don't overthink this thing. It's not necessary. Primary knowledge or secondary knowledge? You're going to use your own senses, your own observances, your own experiments, hopefully, or you're going to believe what you've been told just because that's what everybody believes.